This video was brought to you by Nebula. A trade deal between the European Union and the South American trade bloc Mercosur would be one of the largest in the world, and by this point, they've been working towards it for decades. Despite an agreement being reached in 2019, further progress was halted, and the whole thing was basically put on ice. However, a renewed push this year has breathed some life back into the project. So in this video, we'll give you some background, explain what's happening now, and if this new world's biggest trade deal could become a reality. Before we start, TLDR EU is currently only just behind TLDR UK's subscriber count. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and help TLDR EU win the subscriber race. First though, let's get into some background. Mercosur, or the Southern Common Market, is a trade block of South American countries, namely Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay, with Venezuela suspended since 2016. Now, this block was created in 1991 in order to improve ties, increase trade, and spur development between the countries. Now, obviously, the other player in this story is the European Union, which, considering this is the TLDR EU channel, hopefully doesn't need any additional explanation. Now, negotiations for a trade deal between these two blocks began back in 1999, but it wasn't until two decades later, in 2019, that talks finally concluded and an agreement was struck. However, after all of that effort, the signing and ratification process soon stalled as the EU became increasingly concerned about deforestation in the Amazon, particularly under Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro. And as such, the route to this deal's ratification by every individual EU member state looked increasingly difficult. Since then, the trade deal has effectively been on ice, as national governments and parliaments, including Ireland, France, the Netherlands, and Austria, have signaled their opposition to the deal. Now, these countries might not like the deal, but exporters from both blocs would benefit from the agreement, which would cover a market of well over 700 million people. When announcing the agreement in 2019, the European Commission said that the deal was obviously great news for companies, workers, and the economy on both sides of the Atlantic, saving over 4 billion euros worth of duties per year, making it the largest trade agreement the EU has ever concluded. Despite the benefits and the fanfare, it was met with significant opposition from a range of different parties for a variety of different reasons. European farmers, for instance, particularly in France and Ireland, feared the deal would see them undercut by imported meat and other food products from South America. On the flip side, the automotive industry in Argentina and Brazil fears that they'll take a hit if European manufacturers are given easier access to the South American market. It's not just trade either. From an environmental perspective, there are concerns that the trade agreement's impact on meat production and soy cultivation in Mercosur countries would result in further deforestation, particularly in the Amazon. Environmental activists also say that the deal would see greater exports of polluting vehicles from Europe to South America, as well as pesticides and other chemicals that would have a negative environmental impact. Additionally, indigenous groups from Brazil have said that increased demands for farm products would threaten their lands and rights. Now, unsurprisingly, the freezing of this whole process was good news for the various interest groups we've just mentioned. But in recent months, the mood has started to change among some proponents of the agreement, and there's growing optimism that the stalled trade deal could be revived. A significant factor behind this was Brazil's presidential election in October last year, which saw Lula da Silva's victory over Bolsonaro. Not only did Lula's victory bring about a return to warmer relations between Brazil and much of the European continent, he had also been elected having promised stronger environmental protections and a reversal of the significant deforestation that had taken place under his predecessor. In fact, during the election, Lula said that he wanted to see an agreement reached with the EU over the deal within six months of taking office. And it's not just what's happened in South America either. Conditions seem to be far more favorable on the European side too. The first half of 2023 has seen the rotating presidency of the European Council held by Sweden, and the latter half of the year held by Spain. Both countries have expressed an eagerness to see the deal revived and completed. 
a notably different position to France, who held the post during the first half of 2022. So leaders on both sides of the Atlantic were hopeful that 2023 could finally be the year to get this done. And the EU CELAC, which took place at the beginning of this week, was seen as the prime opportunity to make progress, as it brought together leaders from the EU and the community of Latin America and Caribbean states. But to be fair, that optimism has now receded somewhat, as the parties try to settle their differences and actually come to a final agreement. In March of this year, the European Commission proposed to Mercosur a side letter as an annex to the original 2019 agreement. This side letter seeks extra environmental commitments designed to satisfy the concerns of European governments and the European Parliament. But it ended up just frustrating their Latin American partners instead. Lula said that the letter includes obligations that could result in sanctions if they weren't complied with, something he described as unacceptable. He added, strategic partners do not negotiate on the basis of distrust and the threat of sanctions. With this and other concerns in mind, Mercosur negotiators postponed face-to-face -face talks that had been scheduled for the end of June in order to give themselves more time to prepare a counter-proposal. This counter-proposal is also set to address another of Lula's major concerns, which is a procurement clause allowing European companies to bid for public contracts in Mercosur countries, on equal terms with local firms. Anyway, while this counterproposal is still being finalized, the EU CLAC summit this week saw little tangible progress towards an actual agreement, and if anything, actually exposed divisions between the two regions on other issues like the war in Ukraine. It's not even just Lula that wants to push back in this South American counteroffer though. Argentina's foreign minister said early this month that the deal, as it was closed in 2019, reflects an unequal effort between asymmetric blocs and does not respond to the current international scenario. Amid these concerns from Mercosur, as well as the opposition from individual EU member states, the European Commission has warned against reopening and renegotiating the agreement, preferring to settle concerns through side papers and annexes. The EU's trade chief says that the 2019 deal was negotiated a very long time ago, and strikes a carefully crafted economic balance. So if we now reopen, upset this economic balance, this may lead again to long negotiations with uncertain outcomes. Now, it may seem that these sides are further apart than they were when negotiations concluded in 2019. And even back then, things were put on ice for a reason. But the fact that these disputes are being discussed and negotiated does at least reflect the fact that there is actually political will to try and finalize a deal, something that just wasn't the case a couple of years ago. In fact, there's a view that 2023 might represent the last chance for a signing of the long-delayed deal, a timeline that Ursula von der Leyen says is within reach. Nonetheless, it will certainly be a challenge to try and spend enough time to find a settlement that sufficiently pleases both sides, but without spending so much time that momentum is lost or dynamics change due to domestic events like Argentina's election later this year or the European parliamentary election that comes next year. So regardless of what's agreed, it does seem that time is running out. This is just one of many geopolitical tensions right now though. China is an obvious example of another actor whose decisions seem increasingly troubling at the moment. Ultimately, that's why it's important that we understand these nations and their problems in a detailed way. And a good way to learn more is through Polymatter's brilliant series, China Actually. This show runs through issues from Chinese censorship and their nuclear policy to how the country has come to dominate rare earth mineral production, something we've discussed before in TLDR videos. If that sounds good to you, then you can watch this series alongside a load of others which perfectly complement TLDR videos exclusively on our streaming service, Nebula, where you can also find a bunch of TLDR content too. That's because we post all of our videos ad-free on Nebula, as well as sharing some of our videos there before they ever make it to YouTube. Not only that, we also release hours worth of content only on Nebula every month, from extended editions of our show The Daily Briefing to exclusive explainers and behind-the-scenes clips.
And the good news is that all of this, TLDR content, exclusive documentary series, and a bunch of other brilliant creators are available at a great price. That's because if you sign up using our link in the description, then you can get Nebula for less than two pounds a month. So help out the channel and learn more by signing up to Nebula. Thanks for your support.